Hello, welcome back live stream. Um, this is Jessica DeMassa in the Guidewell Insights Lounge here at X-Men. Thanks so much for staying with us through this break of the main stage action. Uh, main stage will be back soon. Right now, for those of you who didn't hear when they broke, they went to go take their scrubs picture and eat lunch. So <laughs> that's what's happening. Um, we're kind of quiet here in the Innovation Lab as well, but we've got some guests here in the Insights Lounge um, who are going to help make this break a little bit easier to bear through while you're watching at home and while you're tweeting on the Twitterverse. So um, thank you so much for keeping it, um, involved in the conversation here. Hashtag x -Men, if you have something to say and you want us to see it, we would love to hear your point of view as well. Um, so I'm here right now we, in our lounge. We've got um, Dr. Raphael Grossman, and some of you may remember him from um, x -Men's past and also from the main stage a little bit ago. Um, Raphael Grossman is really an interesting surgeon. Um, he's an innovator as well, and he's actually the first surgeon to do a surgery with Google Glass. So welcome, Dr. Grossman. It's a pleasure to have you back here. Thanks Thank so much for joining us. Thank you very much. I'm honored. Thank you. So um, your talk earlier was about you know, integrated reality. So tell me a little bit about what that means and what technologies specifically are contributing to that. Well, it's, uh, we call it virtual reality, we call it augmented reality, we call it the mixed reality. It's a really a, a, a digital reality superimposed in a way to the, the real stuff. And uh, it's uh, really another platform to connect us and to let us communicate in a better way. So in medicine, in surgery, in education, really in any industry, but for us who are uh, healthcare providers and educators of healthcare, not just to providers or students, but to patients, it's uh, something that has an enormous potential to make it uh, exponentially better. Broadly speaking, how are different surgeons and, and, and physicians going to be able to learn how to use this? And not only those that are up and coming, but those who are already established in their practice and have their tried and true way of doing things. What needs to happen to educate them? Well, you know, one of the barriers to uh, adapting these technologies in, in any industry, but especially in healthcare, is really uh, the, the, the change of culture, the change of paradigm, education. That's really important, and that's you know, what, what we're doing, that's what you're doing, that's what I'm doing, that's what Exponential Medicine Conference is doing. Just letting people know. If we let people know what's available, you know, people is going to start demanding those changes. And why is someone going to want to drive 200 miles to see you for 10 minutes when they heard that there is a way to do that on a teleconference on the smartphone? Right. So it's really a, a, a change of paradigm, but it's up to us to educate, to culturally change the way people perceive these technologies that sometimes were created and, and most of the times were created really for, for marketing or for gaming, for yeah. entertainment, but then we can potentially use them to teach better or to even save a life. In that regard, you know, is augmented reality on parity with reality? I mean, as far as like a teaching and a learning tool, you know, is, is there parity there? Or is it better to still learn, you know, via the cadaver lab or whatever? How do, how do those two how do those two different ways of learning fit in together? No, absolutely. You see, it's not really a substitution of one way of doing it or another. It's really a combination mm -hmm. and empowering, augmenting each other by the way of, of, of collaboration, you know, in a way. You're not gonna, let's say, anatomy learning. You have a cadaver lab and that has ethical implications, moral, economic implications. We do it today the same way we probably did it 100, 200, 300 years ago. Right. Now we can use technologies like augmented reality or mixed reality, like HoloLens and meta glasses or touch surgery, yeah. platforms that are there and they are available for us to then combine the teaching of the traditional anatomy with the teaching of anatomy that now it's augmented and empowered by all this technology used in a smart fashion. That's fantastic. So thank you so much, Dr. Grossman, for joining us and for sharing your perspective with us and also for bearing with us on our technical issues. I think I'm standing in some sort of X-Med force field here where my mic just continues to stop working. But yeah. thank you, everybody, for bearing with us. I really appreciate it.